Um, a day in the biking life. Um, Early, early wake-ups. Uh, we have a lot of miles to cover, and we want people to be able to enjoy their day, so we try to give them as much time as possible. They have to be at the host by four. Um, depending on the temperature and how long we're going, we might get up even earlier to beat the heat and give people as long as they need to get there. Um, and we, when we wake up in the morning, we have a lot to do. Um, we have a support van with a trailer that hauls all of our stuff, and if there's a tornado, which there was on my trip last year, you know, hauls everybody up to safety. <laughs> And uh, we have a very aggressive schedule, and hosts are expecting us to come on the day that we told them we're coming, and uh, you can't necessarily make up your miles <laughs> in a second day. So um, there's a support van that we pack up. We pack up the host site, make sure it's cleaner than we found it. Um, we prepare our bikes, we check our air, we check our brakes, we check our chains, and we eat breakfast, and we have a meeting with everybody to go over the route. What are the challenges going to be? What are they going to expect on the road that day? Are there specific landmarks that they should be looking for along the way? And then we ride. Um, as I said, it's pretty casual. It's not a competition. It's not a race to the finish. Um, on the more aggressive mileage days, you know, people sort of have to be a little bit more disciplined per se. Um, but people are free to roam as they want. Everybody's got um, cycling shoes, but they're mountain biking shoes, so they can walk around, go out in the fields. There's lots and lots of pictures of people in hay fields and corn fields. And um, once they arrive at the destination, the earlier they get there, if it's a really great place, they know they want to look around. They can go and explore the town. Um, eventually, ideally, we have dinner, like a potluck dinner with our host and their community or their group and that sort of thing, and we give them a bike and build presentation. And sometimes we have guest speakers um, coming to talk to us uh, more about things that they know that are going on in their community with affordable housing. So here are those, some of these awesome pictures that I've been mentioning. Um, there's been a little advertisement for bike and build that like whites out the front person is like, this could be you next summer. <laughs> Um, the build days, um, as I said, we build with a wide variety of orgs. The goal and mission of Bike and Build was to make a larger impact, to work with all these different groups that are working towards it, not just Habitat, um, but we do um, collaborate with them pretty heavily. Um, neighbor Works, we're building together, um, Mountain Housing, these are all different organizations across the country that have started up. Our group is going to go through Denver, uh, and apparently in Denver, uh, we're going to have a big extravaganza of events. We were supposed to have a day off, but <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a big luncheon with the community. The mayor is going to come and speak on housing. Um, and then they're going to, they have this new thing that's sort of like Bixie Bikes. So it's going to come to Boston, and it's going to be a rental bike system um, that they're going to use during the day as a means of a competition to traveling to all the different homeless communities that are in Denver. And they have to pick up facts and information as they go along. And there's going to be two bike and builders on each of those teams. Those are the plans of is now. Um, so yeah, big impact with all the different organizations. And the sites that we're on, on the particular days, um, it can range from anything from roofing, framing, painting, drywalling, um, a lot of the typical tasks that a volunteer might do when they go to one of these types of projects. Um, and since we have so many people, we're also able to help them with things that they might not ever be able to get around to, like cleaning up the construction site, making sure it's tidy, making things are organized so that they can be more productive. Um, here's some beautiful pictures of building. Um, and as I mentioned, there's four different ways of distributing funds. There's a competitive grant process that goes out. There's single beneficiary. Um, the blitz build opportunity in um, South Carolina's route, we give them an exchange of money um, for letting, allowing us to help them with that. Um, also, the support vans that go with each trip. We own a per percentage of the vans, but the vans that we don't own are often borrowed by Habitat organizations because they use them to bus volunteers or whatever kind of events they're having. And in exchange for that, we give them a sum of money from our pool for not making us have to buy <laughs> a van that we won't use for 75% uh, of the year. Um, as I mentioned, on the road donations, small donations designated by the host that we stay with, and riders um, getting the power to decide where some of their money goes. Um, another thing we do, in addition to presentations at the host sites we go to, is share our knowledge of bicycles. Um, here's a little kid on the boardwalk in Virginia Beach um, being taught how to pump his tires. <laughs> um, there's a lot of pictures from Bikeville of people like riding around on tricycles with the kids, and um, it's a lot of fun. The kids really embrace it. I don't know if you've probably been on the street before and a kid just sees a bicycle go by, and he's like, ooh, bicycle, <laughs> like totally engaged in like what's not going on right around him. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a biking builder, this is the recruiting spiel. Um, applications open in mid-fall. This past year they opened in October and they were full in less than a month. Um, they're not even going to have a s separate uh, like round of hiring for leaders next year because there's just so much demand to do the trip right now. Um, so 
people are like paying attention on Facebook by the minute. If it wasn't for Facebook and Twitter, I wouldn't have known when the applications come out and I might not have gotten in. I almost didn't get in, that's a long story. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's very competitive to get into. Um, so people are waiting by the clock, you know, when it opens, they're like doing it that night and putting it in. Um, there's a $4,000 fundraising minimum. These are just think criteria that you have to commit to if you're gonna do this. Um, training 500 miles before the ride, which may seem small compared to what we're doing, um, but you're never gonna be ready. <laughs> and then you're trying to do at least one ride that's over 65 miles because we're gonna be doing a lot of rides that are pretty large. Um, and then sweat equity. The riders are also doing what owner, end users of these houses are going to be doing, which is you know contributing to an organization in their area uh, and um, sort of getting a handle on what's going to happen on build sites when they get there, so they're really ready to work. So I'm actually one of the four leaders for the Central U.S. route this year, um, and I've been calling strangers all across the U.S. to have them open up their houses to us again, and thankfully. Central U.S. is a trip that's uh, happened for many years now, so some people are like waiting for us to come again, or we're the biggest thing that may be happening there that summer. Um, <laughs> literally, there's, there's, you, you would not, you would, it's so surprising how excited some of these people are. Um, I sent them some of these little promotional videos, and they're just completely psyched. They can't wait, um, and it's just, it's just exciting to see these people getting excited around the cause that we're fighting for. Um, and setting up food donations. One of our leaders is calling people begging for food, um, soliciting the grant applications. We'll be doing that as we go along and managing all the on-the-road logistics. Um, the last thing I have to do for this year is plan our routes between um, places that we're going. So I'm looking at what roads are good, what roads we've gone on in the past, what's the recommended routes from point A to point B, what can our riders actually complete, are they going to have enough shoulder. Um, so each leader is responsible for two out of the eight weeks of the trip. Um, and also planning days off. So there's four days off for the entire summer and um, try to, trying to do something fun with the riders on those days, like hiking in Jackson, Wyoming, which might be something that we do on the day off that I'm responsible for. Um, as I said, up to age 28 for hiring. Um, and yeah, one round of hiring in October in 2011, or 2010, later this year. Journey and camaraderie, another beautiful photograph of Bike and Bill. <laughs> um, you really get into a bubble with these riders. It's, um, it's going to be a little bit sad because I probably won't be able to communicate with all my friends all, all summer, but there's going to be just this really close-knit family that we all generate. And by the end of the trip, there's, I imagine there's, I've been told that there's just huge withdrawal because you become so attached to each other and everybody loves each other. Um, put the body in motion. This is <laughs> the anthem of Bike and Build. Um, they have a bunch of videos to this song. And um, <laughs> it's, it's, it's Moby, you know, I, I think it's Moby, or is it uh, Fatboy Slim? But one or the other is like that kind of song. But um, yeah, this the idea is like getting people empowered, getting people doing things. No more couch potatoes, <laughs> you know, and affordable housing is just becoming a, a bigger and bigger issue. Currently, there's no county in the United States where somebody can work 40 hours a week at uh, minimum wage. 40 hours a week, minimum wage, they can't afford a one bedroom apartment at fair market rent established by their local county. Um, so if you have kids, if you have another spouse, there's nobody to take care of the kids. It, like, If you can barely afford your housing, how are you going to afford all the other aspects in your life to be healthy? And this was from my old <laughs> presentation. Um, and then more partying. This is it. This is the send-off party. I'm leaving Boston in one week, and I'm going to miss everybody to death. <laughs> so thank you so much for Yay. all of your support. I, don't, I, can't, I have to calculate how much of the money that I raised has come from all of you guys <laughs> and your company's matchings. <laughs> how are you doing on your fundraising? I'm almost there. Um, depending on whether this one phony, <laughs> whether this one donation is phony or not, I'm like $100 from 4000 So, yeah, it's, it's come together pretty easily. <laughs>